inevitable. Back in 2019 when Avengers and Game premiered in cinemas, searching Thanos on Google there is an easter egg of the Infinity Gauntlet. Clicking it causes 50% of the search result to disappear. Clicking the gauntlet again brings back the search result. And by the end of this video you'll be able to view the configurable Thanos snap animation that you can react to it any way you see fit. Gonna go ahead and sign into codesandbox.io and create a new React application. As you can see, we simply have two divs with the class of Thanos and Gauntlet. Next, we're gonna have some basic styles of the Thanos element and set a fixed height of 50 pixels. Then we set the Gauntlet's position to be absolute so its width and height are relative to its parent. Next, we add an additional class called Snap to the Gauntlet element. Then we set a background image for this class with its X and Y coordinates set to zero. We can get more information about the background image by copying and pasting the URL in a new tab. If we inspect the page, then go to the network tab, we can see the dimension of the sprite sheet, which is 3840 pixels wide and 80 pixels tall. This is where the 80 pixels height comes from. To get just the first frame instead of the entire sprite sheet, we set a width of 80 pixels. Now onto the fun stuff, animation. We'll start by defining a keyframe animation called Gauntlet, which is going to animate the background position of the sprite sheet on the x-axis. Next we add a class called Animate, and we set the animation property value to use the Gauntlet keyframe we created below. To animate the gauntlet, we simply add the class animate to the element. As you can see, the gauntlet animates, but it doesn't look good. So instead of transitioning from one frame to another, what we want is to be able to step through individual frames in the sprite sheet. And to get the number of frames we need to step through, we have to revisit the sprite sheet. Here is the number of frames we need to step through. A rookie approach would be to start counting, but if you remember, we already have the dimension of the sprite sheet. So in order to get the number of frames in the image, we divide the width by the height. Now we set the number of steps accordingly, and as we can see, each frame is now being animated. We've already done the artwork, so this next step is gonna be pretty straightforward. Next, we're gonna add a new class called Undo Snap with a new sprite sheet as the background image that basically represents undoing the snap. And to see this in action, we basically swap the classes on the gauntlet element. And the animation plays just as we want it. For the most part, we're almost done with this application. Next, we want to add some interactivity and sound effect with React. I'm gonna stop the animation by removing the animate class. And because we want the animation to play when the user clicks on it, we are going to register an onClick event called UndoClick. Next, we define this function called UndoClick. And in the body of the function, we get a target of the element we just clicked on, which in this case is our gauntlet. And then we toggle both classes with background images. And because we have an initial class already set on the element, only one of the two classes will be on at a given time. Although the click event works, we have a tiny problem. We are able to click the gauntlet while the animation is in progress. This is not what we want. Instead, we want to be able to click the gauntlet when the animation has ended. But first, let's get rid of this animation iteration count, as we don't want to play the animation forever. To prevent being able to click on the gauntlet while we are animating, we are going to import three hooks from React. With the use state hook, we are going to create a state called animating, which is a boolean value that helps us to track whether we are animating or not. Then, we will use the use ref hook to get a reference to the Thanos element. And using the last hook, which is the use effect hook, we will get a reference to the Thanos element. And listen for the animation end event. This event is fired when a CSS animation has completed, which returns an object that contains the target element on which the animation has just occurred. Once the animation has completed, we remove the animate class on the target element, then we set the animating state to false. Let's move this anonymous function into a new function called undo animation end. Then to avoid any memory leaks, we are going to clean up after ourselves by stop listening to the animation end event. Now going back to the handler function that triggers the animation. If the animation is already started, we exit the function. Otherwise, we set the animating state to true. Now everything works just as we want it to, except for the last step, we are missing something, sound effect. Scrolling back to the top of the page, I'm gonna instantiate two new audio objects, one for the snap and the second for the undo snap. They will create a function that toggles between these two audio based on a boolean value passed to it. Then we call the function by passing the result of toggling a class on the gauntlet which returns to us a boolean value. And now for the moment we've been waiting for. If you're interested in taking a look at the source code or need access to the assets used in this demo, please visit this repository on my GitHub profile. All links mentioned or used will be in the description box below. React Thanos is also available on NPM, so you can just do NPM install React Thanos if you want to try it out.